Good morning. Uh, so today what we're going to do is we're going to try to get our one bot set up to do a couple of different uh, competitions and events. Um, line following, for example, is one. Uh, sumo is the one we're going to really head for. And also um, for the clean sweep competition. So if you want to have your robot and clear a table of things, uh, and the table has a black line around it, this would be sort of the base uh, introductory program you would need. But to start with, <clears throat> we need to test a couple of sensors. You should have some of these, okay? I have two different styles, same sort of thing. You'll notice that one of them has resistors on the top, one of them has resistors on the bottom. Doesn't really matter. Uh, it is important to note that they each have to have this jumper in here, okay? Uh, this is what turns on and off these LED lights with the jumper out, the LEDs are off, they're infrared, you wouldn't be able to see it anyway, and put it in, and then of course it turns it on. The reason that's even an option is if you want to look for something like a, a flame or some other infrared light source, you can turn off your own uh, IR uh, LEDs. So we're going to plug that back in here. Notice also <clears throat> the cables, if you read it carefully, there is an S, a positive and a negative, okay? Um, the signal wire is going to be closest to the middle of the board, right on top of the S, okay, on both of these. All right, the signal wire is closest to the middle of the board. And the first thing we're going to do is just test it. And, of course, the uh, easiest way to test it is just to go to some a basic piece of code, and we're going to go to examples, we're going to go to basic, and we're going to go to the very first one, analog read serial. Because I want to test these sensors one by one to make sure that they work okay. And we'll just use the base program here. Notice that it is plugged in or pre-programmed for pin A0, which is that second row of pins from the back. Okay, that very last one here that does not have a female socket next to it is pin 13. So A0 begins on the second set of pins toward the back. Uh, this delay one is kind of crazy. I'm going to make that 100 um, milliseconds, a little too fast to read. And that's actually it. I'm going to go ahead and load it up. I'll pause while it loads. Okay, it's done loading. And this time, instead of using the serial window, I'm actually going to use the plotter. So if you go to Tools and look at Serial Plotter, you get a nice graph. Right now, it's plotting noise because I don't have anything in. I'm going to plug this sensor in. And again, making sure that the yellow wire is going to be closest to the chip, because that's the signal. I'm going to plug this in right here to A0. Okay. And now you can see I have a really nice sensor here that, I'm going to bring my hand closer. And what's happening is the light is shining down, bouncing back, and be detected by the phototransistor. Okay? And this thing works extremely well for looking for something like a white, let's get over here so you can see it, or a black line. Okay? So I'm going to test the second one now. Make sure it's equally as good. Keep in mind, if yours does not work, don't assume it's a sensor right off the bat. Uh, I have seen several uh, poorly soldered boards by the students, and uh, you might not have a pin. I shouldn't say several, a couple, and your pin may not be working, or you might have burned it out at some point. So you know, if, it, if A0 doesn't work, try moving up to A9 or A8 or something like that and give it a try. Make sure you change it in code. So here we are again. Okay, so I've got a nice detector here. It can easily find the black line. So in this case, if I'm driving along, basically anything over 400 or something like that is going to be on the black line. All right, so now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to actually physically mount it or mount these guys on here. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to flip this robot over. We have a couple of choices uh, for mounting it. <clears throat> the easiest way uh, is to simply take something like a standoff like this, okay? 
and you screw it into the body someplace where you think a sensor might be nice. I'm going to choose here. And then you can take your sensor and using one of the shortest screws, okay, just screw that into the chassis like so. Okay, now you've got a simple easy mount that you can plug into one of the pins. Um, I'm actually going to do, because I want a little more adjustability and it actually just looks kind of cool, I'm going to use these guys. So you need one of these, okay, which amounts it to the chassis, some kind of extension arm, and something like this piece right here, okay, which will be fitted onto the uh, the sensor itself. And in this case, I'm going to mount it. Hmm, I'm going to put a washer on here, I'm going to mount this guy. I think I'm going to mount it actually fairly far in, like here. And actually what I'll do is, I don't think you need to watch me assemble this saw, because I'll be able to explain what I'm done. But ultimately, this piece is going to get mounted into here, and this piece is going to get mounted into here, just like this, and then this guy will be mounted onto or something like this. But I'll assemble it now and I'll return in just a moment. Okay, so I thought I'd show you one of these, you know, partially assembled here. Um, and I have one already mounted. But if you look, okay, I've got a screw going through this with a nut on the back. I have a washer on there to help keep that plastic from splitting. Uh, and then a longer screw here doing the same thing. I have a washer goes all the way through with a nut on the back. All right, and again another screw with a washer and a nut on the back. So that gives me this linkage like this. Take a look at it, and then once mounted, okay, it mounts on here like so. And I'll go ahead and mount this one while you are watching. And I'm taking a smaller screw. I'm using a quarter-inch screw, the shortest one we have actually, and a washer. And I'm going to put it on here like so, kind of line them up. All right. And then I can make some adjustments and tighten those all the way up. But now you can see I have my two sensors with a lot of adjustment. I can swing it in, swing it out, up and down, and set the levels. So let me, uh, well, actually, I'll plug these guys in right now. I'm going to plug this one into A0. So, and then this one into A1. All right, let me pause it and throw some code up there, and uh, I'll see you in a second. I decided to do one more kind of cool thing here, uh, just kind of show you something that's that's pretty neat. So what I've done now is I've just copy and pasted a couple of lines. So I just copied this uh, sensor value and pasted it below and changed it to A1. So I have two of them being collected, A0 and A1. And then I copy and pasted this line a couple of times. I did get rid of the LN here and the LN here because I wanted them to be on one line. And this is not very well commented or doesn't output very well. That's because I want to show you something cool. But we'll, we'll test this first. And you can see that this guy, when he goes over the black line, he's in the 500s. And this guy, when he goes over the black line, he's in the 400s. So I think we can use a safely say anything over 300 on either sensor means it's going to be on black. But what I wanted to show you is, depending on the version of software you're running, I have the latest version up here. If you're running 1.6.9 or something like that, this will not work. If you've uploaded a newer software, this is kind of cool. Go back to that serial plotter, and we should see we get now two graphs. Okay, again, this will not work on the uh, older version. It only works on the newer versions. But we have two graphs that we can use, and we can see the data sets. Okay, which I think is kind of cool. A nice way to kind of look at what's going on with your robot. 
All right, let me pause this, and I'll be back again in a second. Okay, so I've written a really, really simple piece of code, um, and all it's going to do is check these two sensors. Um, I've got the servo module uh, over here, okay, just like we've done before. And um, these all were carried over from the servo module. I've added just a couple different variables. I've added the uh, IR pins, uh, the left and the right, which are the pins A1 and A0. And I've created two variables to hold the data collected from those two sensors. Um, setup is exactly the same as copied and pasted from over here. I'm not going to do any printing out this time. Uh, this is a super simple demo. And uh, the loop. <clears throat> so all I do is uh, check the sensor. And as I alluded to before, if the sensor is greater than 300, well, let's turn some direction, depending on whether or not you're following a line and you want to turn toward the line, or if you're in an arena and you want to turn away, you would decide if you want to make it go left or right. I've made it go 10 steps. Uh, that takes a lot of playing to figure out what's the best. And then the default is to go forward just a bit. Okay, because if you think about it, if these values are false, it's just going to check sensor, go forward, check sensor. It's going to be going forward for practically uninterrupted. This checking the sensor takes microseconds. So it'll be an uninterrupted move forward with very frequent checks to check sensor and then movements to the left or to the right. Okay, and you can see I've already loaded it. Uh, it works just fine. Okay, so that's the simplest demonstration of line following and staying in a sumo rank that I can come up with. Uh, this is not the best code. It's just a teaser, a serving suggestion, just something to get you started. And believe it or not, you can play sumo with just this. Okay, it's called blind sumo. Uh, the robots stay in the arena and uh, they move quickly. Uh, they don't scan, uh, so they're, they're constantly moving around. And by sheer chance, they will crash into each other, and they will push. And eventually, they will push themselves to the edge of the rink, and then their sensors will still work. It's uh, still a lot of fun, uh, but it's not very intelligent. So I will see you again shortly with some add-ons.